At Microsoft Ignite last week, a couple of new premium add-ons were announced for SharePoint and Planner. This adds to a lineup of add-ons expanding the core Microsoft 365 services, some with premium prices like Copilot for Microsoft 365, and others with premium names like Teams Premium. Microsoft licensing has always been pretty confusing, but with the rise of the add-on and the spread of features into new licenses that aren't necessarily part of your core services, even if you opt for the top tier Business Premium or E5 licenses, this confusion is growing. And what is potentially also growing is the amount you're spending on licensing each of your users every month. In this video, I'm going to look at this add-on licensing. What type of features are you adding on? And if you're a business owner or you're responsible for your business's IT spend, how should you be thinking about these new options and making sure you're getting value from your purchases? Going back years, there have always been more enterprise-focused products from Microsoft outside of the Office or Microsoft 365 apps most smaller businesses and end users are most familiar with. We've had things like data center editions of server operating systems or dynamic CRM. Having concepts of different tiers of products is absolutely nothing new. It wasn't in the on-premises age, and it certainly isn't in the cloud age either. But foundationally, with the shift to Microsoft 365 in the cloud, where we pay month to month, rather than paying one time for each particular version of a product, the way new product features and general advances worked changed. Back with those perpetual licenses, if you wanted that flashy new feature, you had to pay to upgrade your license. And once you had done, within reason, you could keep using that feature for as long as you liked. When things move to a monthly fee in the cloud, this annual or multi-year upgrade cycle broke, and new features just started arriving when they were ready. Eventually, the version of something like Outlook you were running was just Outlook for Microsoft 365 versus some version tied to a perpetually licensed product that you could buy as an alternative. If you bought a retail copy of Office 97 Small Business Edition 25 years ago, it set you back $499, or nearly $1,000 in inflation-adjusted terms. Spread that over two or three years, and you can see that what we now pay for Microsoft 365 is incredibly reasonable. Not just in terms of getting access to those apps, but also considering we no longer have to worry about running and licensing a, an Exchange server, or buying hard drives for storage, or standing up a Windows server for file shares. These all-inclusive licenses are a comparatively amazing deal. But you can 100% believe all of this to be true, and still feel like you'll be getting punched in the gut when you have to click the button to add that $30 a month co-pilot for Microsoft 365 license or the $10 a month Teams Premium license. No one likes paying more, and particularly not when the deal was supposed to be just keep paying each month and we'll keep innovating. Gatekeeping some of that innovation just feels wrong. So I already have a video series on Teams Premium, and there's been a lot of content here on Microsoft 365 Copilot, or now Copilot for Microsoft 365. So let's dig into the two new ones, Premium Features for Planner and SharePoint Premium. What are they? And why does it make sense for these to be new add-on license tiers? Let's start with SharePoint Premium. SharePoint is truly the foundation of Microsoft 365. Pretty much all the files you store in your tenant and a lot of the other data lives in SharePoint. It's the core storage technology for Teams, for OneDrive, for lists, and numerous other things. If all you do with SharePoint is sync your files in OneDrive and share some stuff in Teams, then SharePoint Premium's features wouldn't seem like an upgrade for you. They would seem like a completely different product. It's all to do with intelligently processing documents, allowing you to keep things updated, correct, and shared at huge scale across complex organizations, and importantly for every innovation at Microsoft right now, including access to AI features too. And many of the features available are already in SharePoint today and can be added with another add-on license or other. These are just being strategically realigned and expanded under the SharePoint Premium name. 
For those of you watching who spend huge sums of money on third-party enterprise-grade document management and processing solutions, you're probably going to be interested to see what SharePoint Premium can do and find out how much it's going to cost. This costing information is going to be coming in 2024. But there's no way these sorts of features should be rolled into Microsoft 365 base licenses as it's a completely different set of capabilities to what is needed to run Microsoft 365 or provide SharePoint storage in many organizations. In my opinion, the name SharePoint Premium is just somewhat misleading, as in general, something that is premium is simply an upgraded version of something that is non-premium. If you choose a premium restaurant, you might get better food at a more elaborately set table. But you still get food and a table just like you do in any restaurant. If you choose a premium hotel, you might get a bigger room, you might get a more comfortable bed, you might get better sheets. But you still just get a room and a bed like you do when you book any hotel. SharePoint Premium is not better features for the same purpose but entirely different features for an entirely different set of purposes than the bog standard SharePoint that we all get in Microsoft 365. Now, don't get me wrong here, SharePoint Premium is exciting. Depending on the price point, it might bring advanced document management to a whole new range of use cases, but it is not just a more premium version of what you've already got. And anyone who feels like they need to buy SharePoint Premium because it gives you the most premium version of SharePoint has been misled by marketing rather than sold on a necessary range of product features. Much the same is true with Planner 2. While the new Planner itself is not called Planner Premium, it is described as adding a new set of premium features. But just as the case with SharePoint, this is really Microsoft rolling up features that in some cases already exist and giving them a new label in a new app. Project for the Web, which is already an add-on license, will become Planner. And if you want the upgraded features that this roll-up offers, then you're going to have to pay extra for it. But again, while task and plan integration for project users makes a lot of sense, Project integration for those who are already happy with the features of the existing planner or to-do app probably is less necessary. Again, this isn't necessarily a premium set of features layering new capabilities onto the solution for one set of tasks, but joining together different and distinct tasks you may or may not have a use for. And again, don't get me wrong, the lack of unification in the Microsoft 365 task ecosystem has been troublesome for years, and work to bring all the different places you might have different types of to-do items together makes a huge amount of sense. But whether you need a particular license should depend on the specific features that license gives you, and just throwing premium in the name or description doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be better for what you or your users need. I think much the same is true for existing add-ons in this new premium sphere. I'm a big fan of Teams Premium. I think it adds some amazing functionality for $10 a month. But I also think the name is somewhat misleading. For most users, the basic Teams you get in every Microsoft 365 license is more than premium enough. And unless you need specific capabilities or niche features, Teams Premium will add nothing to your day. But there is one exception to this. The only feature of Teams Premium that I think is genuinely a straight enhancement to the Teams core without any specific specialist use case connected to it is the Intelligent Recap feature. And interestingly, that's the one feature of Teams Premium that you're going to be able to get by adding on another add-on license, Copilot for Microsoft 365. So in this, Microsoft is kind of acknowledging to some extent that Teams Premium isn't just a straightforward premium upgrade for every user. So the first thing you must consider if you're holding the IT purse strings is that these premium add-ons are not necessarily better or more powerful versions of the base. They are actually products serving entirely different sets of needs. Having Microsoft 365 licenses that are just extended up to the most premium level possible is not necessarily going to make your business more productive or your team members more efficient. Each add-on should be treated like a new product, and new products should always be linked to maximizing business value. This can be confusing, 
as we're used to services, we're paying more to get a premium or pro addition to the end of the license name, just gets you a straight upgrade of common features, not something totally different. If you consider other SaaS products like QuickBooks Online or Calendly or HubSpot, when you upgrade the license tier, you get some things that are different, but mainly what you get is layered features and capacity. In most cases, this kind of setup really doesn't parallel very well with what we see from Microsoft licensing. But while Microsoft may not have taken a page out of a lot of SaaS product playbooks when structuring its licenses, it is starting to do something that is entirely out of that playbook, and in my opinion, also directly out of the playbooks of freemium products. Whereas in the on-premises days, if your business chose to license Office but not Project, your team members wouldn't necessarily know such a product exists, now we see the opportunity to buy more and upgrade at every turn for every user. Much like the candy section next to the checkout in the supermarket that is designed to tempt that tired toddler who barely made it around the store without a meltdown. I'm going to be honest here, I hate this. Every time I see a button I cannot use in a Microsoft product with a little premium indicator next to it, I die a little inside. I think these are appalling, unjustifiable design choices by Microsoft, a company that identifies as being a provider of enterprise products. Microsoft's customers are the IT buyers in organizations, not the end users. This is just like a caterer wandering its staff around at a wedding dinner, hawking a $10 upgrade to each guests for the champagne being served. I would be hard pressed to think of anything Microsoft does with its products that frustrates me more than these ads. Do you agree? Or do you have other opinions on this? Let me know down in the comments. And while you're down there, it would be a great help if you'd give the video a thumbs up. It helps to get in front of new people. And if you're not subscribed already and you want to see more like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button too. So why is Microsoft approaching its licensing this way? I think the reality is that even those with a fairly good knowledge of Microsoft 365 still have big blind spots when it comes to the sheer range and depth of products you can buy from Microsoft and associate with your Microsoft 365 tenant. A lot of businesses use third-party software to achieve outcomes that Microsoft has a solution for, not because that third-party product is better or cheaper, but just because it's more visible than Microsoft's solution and has done a better job of getting in front of potential users. I recently made a video comparing Microsoft Bookings to Calendly, and while a product like Calendly certainly does have features that Bookings doesn't, except in fairly niche scenarios, most users can probably get from Bookings without any additional fee what they are getting from Calendly for $12 or $16 a month. From a purely business perspective, Microsoft probably sees this as leaving money on the table. And for many small businesses, once you add together Microsoft 365 plus their third party spend, you're probably paying significantly more than buying Microsoft 365 plus a couple of add-ons. You're also making managing your systems and your data more complicated, potentially less secure, and also, if you choose to deploy AI tools like Copilot for Microsoft 365, you're making getting maximum value out of that tougher too. The only way Microsoft gets these products in front of people is by making more noise, by rebranding them under flashier names and adopting the tactics of many of these smaller SaaS startups like in-product ads. I don't like it but I do understand it. As an IT leader, your prime concern should be equipping your teams with tools that allow them to do their best work while prioritizing those investments that are gonna have the maximum payback. And that payback isn't necessarily always going to be more revenue. You might choose to add a $30 Copilot for Microsoft 365 license because it gives team members a better work-life balance, reduces absence, and delivers reduced team turnover. The point is that you should have a plan that is justifiable beyond just spending the least possible, so that when those upgrade ads start popping up for your users, you have a good reason why you might not want to invest in that new tool right now. And for those organizations with significant IT spend with Microsoft and third parties, new license packages like these are a great opportunity to review the fit of Microsoft solutions for some of the things you rely on other providers for right now. Beyond just comparing price, there are other real benefits in bringing more of your workloads under Microsoft's umbrella in terms of servicing, support, and securing your environment. 
As always, if you're looking for support in these kinds of issues, feel free to reach out. I have a link down below where you can book time with me using my new Digital Transformation Virtual Coaching Service. And in those sessions, one of the things I'd be happy to help you with is to provide a quick sense check on how your allocation of your IT budget might be realigned to better serve your business goals. Unfortunately, I think the rise of the add-on licenses will continue. The positive of this is I do think these are a genuine reflection of Microsoft either realigning its products to more reasonably connect them to a particular business value add, or in the case of pretty much everything AI, truly new innovation. On balance, a proliferation of add-ons is better than steep price hikes for core Microsoft 365 features, but it does add more complexity that might overall mean you're having to spend more on management or consulting services to get the best from your purchases. For many businesses, the difference between effective and ineffective IT tooling is the difference between success and failure. The tools in the IT realm are critical to much of the work many businesses do and to the back office processes that allow them to operate effectively, compliantly and securely. Having the best tools should be a business essential and having a greater range of options will allow you to better tailor your tooling to your need. Thanks for watching through to the end. I hope this video was valuable to you. Until the next one, bye bye.